guys, how's it going? It's me, Josh Halter, owner and founder of The Bio Dude. You can check out my website, www.thebiodude.com. Check me out on Instagram and, of course, on Facebook. And subscribe to my channel. So today, I have a brand new ZooMed 18 Cube that I'm going to be showing you guys how to build your Terra Sahara Bioactive Kit. Now, the kit that I'm going to show you um, on, on how to build is just the uh, the the substrate, the biodegradables, and the bioshop. I am then going to be adding in bugs and decor and planting this tank as it's going to be for sale at the NARBC Reptile Expo this upcoming weekend in Arlington, Texas. Very excited. So for starters, I have my 16 inch uh, my 16 inch LED up here with the props, um, and of course my one of a kind desert Terra Sahara substrate. So what makes this substrate so unique? is that it's always going to stay dry on the top and going to stay moist in the middle and bottom layers. What this does is it creates the necessary air pockets from the top all the way down to the bottom so that way it doesn't become uh, stagnant air, allows for your cacti and succulents to grow as well as it retains all tunnels and burrows. Another good factor um, about this is that it doesn't raise the humidity of your tank. A lot of people want to go desert for bio, want to go bio for their desert animals, but they're like, wait, the substrate raises the humidity. This does not. So for starters, what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up my bag of Terra Sahara here, and I am simply going to dump, dump each bag into the into the the vivarium. Now. You do not need to use my hydro grow drainage layer with my Terra Sahara because it doesn't need a drainage layer because you are you are consistently excuse me um, allowing the air to reach the top all the way to the bottom and you're keeping you know a desert animal so there's no need for excess humidity in your substrate thus no need for the drainage layer. A, a setup like this works great for leopard geckos, bearded dragons, um, specific types um, of uh, cotter lizards, uromastics, desert iguanas, particular types of monitors, some d desert tortoises, the list goes on and on. And the fact that it retains all tunnels and burrows makes it even better because it allows your animals to create a network of tunnels which, allow, which allows them to feel more secure and act like reptiles. If you all check out my oscillated skink video, you'll see it. So, as you can see, I, I put three bags of Sahara in here. The general rule of thumb for your Sahara is that it should be at least three inches deep, okay? I'm actually gonna uh, keep it right like this. I'm not gonna put in the fourth bag. Um, and how I'm gonna be doing this for starters is I'm gonna take uh, this piece of Mopani here. Okay, and I'm actually going to do somewhat of a dam. I should have put the piece in first, but that's okay. Yeah, nice. Okay. All right. So, we have, I, I put a piece of Mopani down, and we just have the straight up Sahara layer. One thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my first biodegradable, which is my AAA New Zealand sphagnum moss. Now the moss for the Sahara, it is very ne it is necessary that it's in here. The moisture content should be as follows, moist but not dripping whatsoever. You take your moss and you put it here, right into the terrarium, like this. Now, what this moss is gonna do is it's gonna help maintain air pockets which is extremely important for the quality of your substrate and your plants. Create humidity pockets in the substrate for when your animals burrow, which humidity pockets for burrowing animals helps with shedding, respiration, and hydration. So I got a good amount mixed in here. And, that, and, and what that's also gonna do is as it breaks down, it's gonna create nutrition for the Sahara working your bio. So, Next thing I'm going to do is add the BioShot. Now what my BioShot does, it, it is a supplement that encourages and drives the bioactivity in your bioactive terrarium. So when I first started the BioDude, I was always using the springtails and isopods. Now I still recommend the springtails and isopods, but they are not 100% necessary to get the benefits of bio. So essentially what the BioShot is, it is my Corazon Archaea um, that essentially 
um, promote and work together um, to break down organic matter, such as feces, shed, things like that, while creating macronutrients for your plants, while driving the natural bio bioactive drivers and factors that, that create your bioactive ecosystem. So essentially it does just what the bugs do, but it comes in a dry form. You don't have to try to keep the bugs alive, it makes things a little bit easier for you. And then the last step for your kit is adding your biodegradables. So here are my, uh, my oak leaves. Sometimes they range from magnolia, sometimes they range from oak. Um, if you purchase the, one of my big box kits um, that are in the stores, uh, they uh, do not have the leaves in them, but you can get um, the leaves from my website if you choose to want to use them. So I, I, as you can see, I got the leaves here and I'm just gonna slowly mix in the leaves. Now, a lot of people say that, Josh, this doesn't look like a desert. Well, the Terra Sahara isn't supposed to mimic a desert sand. It is supposed to mimic the rocky outcrops, outcrops of, a, of mountainous terrain, which 90, 95% of your reptiles that are desert dwelling, that's what they're exposed to. So as you can see how I got everything nice and misted here, or, or nice and spread out here, um, next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to start decorating. So the first plant that I have here is called an aloe ciliaris. I sell adults and small ones. And what's nice about these is if you look here, you see how it grows. So there's a new plant coming here, 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 and all over the place. So I'm going to remove this from its pot. So just give me one moment. And I'm gonna get all the excess root, all the excess soil off of it. Um, now, from my growers, all my desert plants are grown cleanly, but I still recommend you plant them bare root to ensure um, proper acclimation. Okay, so you can see here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this all the way down. Right like that. Right like that. Oh yeah, I'm digging that, looks nice. Now, if this gets too tall, you can cut it right like this. What I'm gonna do, and you can put it right in the soil and it grows. All, all the great things about the Sahara, I love it. Next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to add in my piece of ghost wood. I think I want to put, hmm, bear with me, one. I don't know if I like it like that. But if it's, there we go. And then I'm going to take this piece of cork, and I'm actually going to create a hide out of it. So this is gonna start the burrow for them. So you see that? Nice and easy. Okay. Got that. I am then gonna add in one of my cacti. Now all the cactuses I sell, most of them are spineless and 100% edible. The ones that are spines are mimics. So the spines are soft to the touch. Like they won't hurt you or your animal. So, now I'm going to take cactus, I'm actually going to plant this, plant it right in the back. Now, if you get, now what's nice about cactus is, like I said, they're completely edible. So if your animal eats them, this species, Epontia danicolor, um, is very high in calcium, which is excellent when you're dealing with your desert, desert uh, foragers. I then got a small cryptanthus right here. I love the cryptanthus because they can work in dry or wet environments. They're very easy to maintain and grow. And they get bright pink with the right light, such as my BioDude LEDs. Put some of the, put that there. I'm gonna put the magnolia seed pod. I think I'm gonna throw that right here. Again, guys, I'm all about the seed pods. It's not just Look, it's not just the looks, it's they break down so fast and provide fuel to your tank to make it seed a little bit faster. 
The next plant that I'm gonna put in here is the elephant feet. I have two of them, so I'm gonna put one. I wanna put one right here. So the elephant feed is gonna grow like a small tree or shrub. Very, very easy to grow. Um, completely edible and safe if ingested. Okay. Now I got another one. right down here. Now my hope is that with me planting the elephant feed right here is that it grows upwards and shingles which is what I'm expecting it to do. Okay. Digging that. Next thing I got is a water dish. water bowl. I, I like to put the water bowl somewhere that I can easily reach them. Um, so, you know, to be honest with you, I'm probably going to put the water dish down here. And then I'm going to put this back. Right like that. Oh yeah, so what's going to be nice about this is that if crickets get into the water, they'll be able to crawl out from the choya, as you can see there. I am then going to add in, as, the, as a supplement, my spring tails and isopods. So I'm adding giant orange isopods. So I'm actually gonna dump them right there and you guys can see them scatter. There's one, there's one. And then I'm gonna add in the spring tails. I'm gonna throw them in the back. Okay. And then I'm gonna give this tank a nice mist. Now, as far as maintenance goes, on your Terra Sahara Bio, and your Terra Sahara Bio do kit. You can mist the tank every single day if you want. You could hook it up to a mist king. It should be misted once a day. If you're busy like me and don't really have the time, you know, uh, to be misting all of your tanks all the time, one thing you can do is uh, take a watering can like this and just lightly water your tank like this once a week. And what you're going to notice is that your that your substrate will be moist in the middle and bottom layers and dry at the top. And that's exactly how it should maintain all the time. So it's different for everybody. There are some people that water their tanks once every two weeks and that's all that they do for their larger bearded dragon enclosures. And then I have other clients that have to do it once every four days. It really is different for everybody. So I went and got this going here. It's excellent. Digging it. Looks like the water dish got a little dirty. I don't know if I'm going to keep it there, but we'll see how it goes. And let's see. So yeah, guys, you can see here, this is a pretty staple setup with one of the, with one of the Bio Dude kits. Let me get this uh, set up here. Excellent. So guys, my name's Josh Halter, owner and founder of the Bio Dude. I really hope you enjoyed the video. I really enjoyed building this one. I really like how it looks. It's simple. Any, any questions or concerns, you guys can definitely uh, re uh, reach out to me. I always have a lot of questions about the Sahara because it is a completely different type of substrate. Uh, there's nothing like it, nothing. And uh, please check out my website. Uh, check out uh, my YouTube channel, uh, the rest of the videos and all that good stuff. Again, guys, thank you very much. The dude abides.